I'm Professor Megan. I'm Professor Susan. And we're your your nutrition nutrition profs. profs. We are registered dietitians and college professors who have taught more than 10,000 students about health and nutrition. We have answered a lot of questions about nutrition over the years. Some questions we get asked every year, and some are rarely asked, but very interesting. We are here to share our answers to these common and uncommon nutrition questions with you. So bring your curiosity and let's get started. Welcome Welcome to to our class. class. And welcome. Today is National Asparagus Day, May 24th. Wow, a whole day to celebrate a vegetable. (laughs) Yes, and there are actually several days devoted to veggies. There's National Cabbage Day in February, National Spinach Day in March, National Garlic Day in April, and so many more. So celebrate them all. (laughs) But today we're celebrating asparagus. Megan, you remember our very first episode almost one year ago yes. was all about asparagus and why some people's pee smells after eating it. Yes. And listeners, if you've ever wondered about this, definitely go check that episode out. That was our very first one. Yeah. So cool. But today, we're just going to revisit the veggie itself. So do you think asparagus deserves its own celebratory day, Megan? Well, let's talk about asparagus a little and let our listeners decide for themselves. That's a good idea. Okay. Can you believe that there are over 250 different types of asparagus? No, absolutely not. I would have guessed 30, maybe 40. I mean, seriously, 250? That's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Asparagus is part of a genus of perennial flowering plants called Asparagaceae. Some are grown as ornamental plants. So they're just pretty. Right. They're finely branched and sometimes called asparagus fern, but the one we eat is Asparagus officinalis, and that's the sciencey name for it. Different species can live in all sorts of environments, from rainforests to semi-desert habitats, and asparagus is grown all over the world. I'm pretty sure green asparagus is the most common, but you can also find it in purple and white, which is just green asparagus that's grown in total darkness. I wonder who came up with growing asparagus in total darkness. And why? I know. (laughs) But recently, I actually saw all three colors at the grocery store, and we did post a pic in our show notes so you guys could see the three different colors. I wonder if they taste different based on color. Well, we're going to find out because I bought all three colors and we're going to try them. Nice. I've only ever eaten the green. Okay. So we have a raw as well as steamed samples of each to try. Okay. So let's try these. Let's start with green as our control, Okay. right? Because that's the one we're most familiar with. So let's start with the raw one. Okay. So let's eat some raw asparagus green. Hmm. Tastes a little bitter. Does it? I'm getting earthy. Definitely earthy. Not bitter on the end, just at the beginning, I feel Mm. like. Definitely Mm. grassy. Yeah, yeah. Woodsy, grassy. It's good. Yeah. Okay, let's try steamed green. That's a little more buttery. Definitely more buttery, and we did not add any butter. We did not. We just steamed it. I like it better cooked. I do too. I do too. Okay, so that was our control. Because it's green. We've had the green before. And it tastes like asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what you would expect. Okay, let's try the white. The white one we found was huge. <laughs> it was huge. So, let, oh, let's try the, the raw white first. Oh, I almost dropped it on the floor. Oh, don't do that. Bitter. I'm not getting bitter. What are you getting? I'm not getting as much flavor in the white. No. It's pretty bland. Mm. Woody? Mm. Yeah. And that might be because it was a a pretty large stalk. Yeah. Yeah, The flowering portion was very small. It was. Okay. So let's try the steamed white. Better? Definitely better. It reminds me of something. I don't know what. I don't know. It's a little bit... Sweeter, less grassy. Yeah. I like the steamed white better. I, I like the steamed much better. Much better than the than raw. the raw white. Yeah. 
And they don't taste exactly the same. No. They're slightly different. Mm-mm. All right, let's try the purple. Okay. Purple, raw. I'm getting bitter on this one. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay, let's try purple steamed. It actually kind of looks green It now. looks green, yeah. <laughs> now that we've steamed it. All right, here we go. I don't know what to say about it. It's more woody, I think. Um, I don't taste as much of a difference between the steamed versus the raw in purple. You're right. You're right. That's unusual. The flavor is really, really similar versus the green and the white were Very both different. different yeah. Steamed versus raw. Interesting. My least favorite, I think, was the purple. I know. I'm surprised. It's prettier, though. It is the prettiest. Yeah. Okay. So the flavor is slightly different based on the colors. Mm -hmm. And we liked the steamed better than the raw. Mm -hmm. For all three. For all three. But I think I, I think I liked green best. Yeah. Overall. Yeah, I think so too. That might be there might be a reason why it's the most common. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> it also could be familiarity. Yeah. That, that could be. You know, but I would yeah, they were I mean, they were they were all fine, but yeah. slightly different taste versus color. Yeah. Okay. Now I know. Now we know. Well, Asparagus is really interesting because it's considered a stem vegetable. So what we actually eat is the stem or the root shoots of the plant that come up out of the ground. Yes. And listeners, if you've never seen how asparagus grows, check out the pic we posted on our website. They grow straight up out of the ground like little miniature asparagus trees. Yeah, they're really they're cute. They're cute. <laughs> <laughs> If you decide you want to grow asparagus in your garden, you do need a nice sunny spot and you'll have to be a little bit patient because if you plant asparagus from seeds, it takes four years before you can harvest any asparagus spears. Four years is a really long time. I'm not sure I really like asparagus enough to wait that long to grow my own. Plus, you can just buy it at the grocery store. <laughs> very true. Very, very true. Well, there is an alternative. You can plant the crowns instead of seeds, and the crowns are one-year-old plants. And then you'll only have to wait three years? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's still pretty long to wait. <laughs> but the good news is once your plant gets started, a single plant can live almost 30 years if you treat it right. That's a good return on investment. Yeah, it really is. Asparagus is considered dioecious, and that's a sciencey botanical word that means it produces both male and female plants. And if you like to forage, you may be able to find wild asparagus. They're usually found in a sunny spot, and the sciencey name for wild asparagus is Asparagus acutifolius. And I know it grows wild in some ditches in South Dakota where I grew up. I actually have cousins who forage for it every summer. That would be so interesting. We should go. Let's do it. Road trip. <laughs> Asparagus has been cultivated for thousands of years. They've found depictions of it on ancient Egyptian architecture from as long ago as 3000 BCE. And they've also found evidence that it was eaten in ancient Spain and Syria. The Greeks and Romans ate it or they used it as offerings to the gods. They used the Persian word asparag which means shoot or sprout. Eastern and Greek cultures used asparagus to treat asthma, kidney, bladder, and liver issues. The Greek word asparagos first appeared in print in English in 1000 AD. It's also been called sparage, asparagus in English-speaking countries, and peasants called it sparrowgrass, which I get, right? That makes sense. Asparagus, sparrowgrass, makes sense to me too. Its use spread throughout Europe, and it came to North America with the Europeans in the 16 and 1700s. In 1685, an advertisement for Pennsylvania by William Penn displayed a list of crops that grew well in the American climate, and that list included asparagus. Asparagus is popular. It's one of the top 20 vegetable crops, and Americans reportedly consume over 500 million pounds of asparagus every year. Whoa. That's 250,000 tons. 250,000 tons is so hard to imagine. That's a lot of spears. Yeah. <laughs> it's an amazing springtime vegetable. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, it grows best in full sun, like we mentioned, and in moderate climates. So, you know, those USDA plant hardiness zones? I actually do. It grows best in zones three to eight. 
So that means it'll grow in most of the U.S., except for the southernmost parts, like the Gulf Coast, including South Texas, where we live, and Florida, and it also won't grow well in the desert southwest. In the U.S., commercial asparagus production is concentrated in three states, California, Michigan, and Washington. They produce about 85 million pounds. But the number one producer worldwide is China, followed by Peru and Germany. Interesting. Most of the asparagus that we find in our supermarkets is grown in Central and South America. Although a plant can produce spears for decades, cultivation is labor intensive. Spears have to be hand harvested by digging about nine inches down and then clipping the spear at the base. Nine inches. That's a long way to dig. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of work. Hmm. Yeah. If you want to find out for yourself how much work it is, <laughs> check in your area. You may be able to find a you pick it asparagus field and try it yourself. It's best in spring, and so that's probably why National Asparagus Day is in May. Yeah, makes sense. You can also travel to Oceana County, Michigan, and attend the National Asparagus Festival this year. Whoa. I know. This year it's on June 8th, and it's their 51st celebration. Maybe I should add that to my bucket list. Oh, that would be perfect for a Nutrition Pros vacation. Yes. <laughs> Let's do it next year. Asparagus is very nutrient-dense, meaning it has lots of nutrients per bite. A typical serving of about six spears that are the length of your hand provides about 22 calories and up to 40% of 10 vitamins and 9 minerals. It's especially rich in the fat-soluble vitamins like A, E, and K. It's also high in the B vitamin folate, which is needed for healthy pregnancies and for making DNA, and in thiamine, which maintains your body's metabolism. You'll also get some copper and some iron, and these are needed to make hemoglobin, which you need for healthy red blood cells to carry oxygen. And the mineral selenium, which is a powerful antioxidant. We've talked about antioxidants in many episodes. Yes, but let's, we have. Yeah, <laughs> but let's just say that antioxidants protect cells from damage that can cause inflammation, aging, and diseases like cancer. A serving also provides two grams of soluble fiber, and that's about 8% of what you need in a day. That's not too bad for a serving, but it's not as much fiber as you'd find in something like avocado or Brussels sprouts or artichokes. Not only does asparagus contain a plethora of vitamins and minerals, it also contains several phytochemicals. Yes, and we've talked about phytochemicals before. These are those non-nutrient substances in plants that provide additional health benefits. The main phytochemicals in asparagus are rutin, protodiacin, and glutathione. It's often the phytochemicals in a plant that contribute to plant pigmentation or color, and rutin is one of these. It helps provide the green and purple colors in asparagus and is thought to have anti-inflammatory effects. Sounds pretty good. Protodiacin is considered a steroidal saponin. This is a new sciencey word for me. I hadn't heard that before. Scientists aren't clear yet about the benefits but it may improve sexual function and male fertility. More research is definitely needed, though. You can actually find it in herbal elixirs or other dietary supplements that supposedly improve libido or testosterone production, but we are very skeptical of this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the science is still pretty weak. And some articles say that excessive doses of protodiacin may cause heart issues, so keep that in mind. But the amount in actual asparagus shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, food over supplements yes. always. But the third phytochemical, glutathione, is a powerful antioxidant linked to cancer prevention. And according to the National Cancer Institute, asparagus is the top vegetable provider of glutathione. Wow, that's a really good reason yeah. to eat asparagus. The nutrient and phytochemical content of the three different colors is pretty similar, so it really doesn't matter what color you eat. At the store, you can buy it fresh, canned, or frozen. Most grocery stores will sell it year-round, but it is an early spring plant, so it should be least expensive in season whenever spring hits in your area. That is also when you would be most likely to find it at a local farmer's market. So here's some tips for buying fresh asparagus. If you're going to buy it at the store, make sure it's either on ice 
or displayed in upright bunches in cold, fresh water. That's the way the stuff I bought was was displayed. Look for tips that are tightly closed and firm, and the bunches should have a bright color and smell fresh and definitely not funky. Ours did not smell funky. (laughs) Stocks or spears, they can come in various sizes, ranging from the diameter of a straw to thicker than your thumb. The white one we bought was the thickest... (laughs) I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was easily an inch in diameter. We'll post pics. Yeah, we will. <laughs> the smaller, thinner diameter, they're early harvest and they tend to be more tender. But thicker stalks tend to have more robust flavor, but are a little bit woodier in texture. Ours were all, besides the white one, the mm-hmm. purple and the green were all about maybe a third of an inch in diameter. Yeah. Sounds I mean, about right. Yeah. So they weren't the tender new stalks. They mm-hmm. were more robust, I would say. <laughs> you can eat any any that you want, but the thicker ones might need a little bit more cooking time. Once you get at home, asparagus doesn't last long, so plan to eat it the same day or the next. Or if you're going to store it longer, trim off the end and store the bunch upright in a jar with a little water in the bottom. Or you can wrap the trimmed asparagus in a damp paper towel and store it in a plastic bag, and that gives you a couple of extra days. You can also freeze or can asparagus if you have a big harvest or if you just couldn't resist buying extra at the farmer's market. I've never canned anything, but there are many, many websites and YouTube videos about canning that can help guide you. I have frozen asparagus when I bought too much to eat, and I'm probably going to freeze some of this (laughs) because that's a lot of asparagus that we just bought. And I just trimmed off the ends and put, you know, half a dozen or a dozen stalks in a closed freezer bag and put them in the freezer. And I've taken them out as much as a year later and they were still delicious. Well, once you get it home, you can eat it raw or fresh, steamed, boiled, broiled, sautéed, roasted in the oven, grilled pretty much any way you want. Yeah, it's very versatile. Of course, you can also eat it raw like we did. But there is some evidence that cooking may increase its antioxidant activity, and we did like the steamed better. Yeah. Cooking also improves digestibility and bioavailability or nutrient absorption. So... Have we convinced you that asparagus is deserving of its own special day? I hope so. Celebrate asparagus today. So maybe roast it in the oven, steam it in the microwave, add it to your scrambled eggs, or just eat it raw. Happy Happy Asparagus Asparagus Day. Class Class dismissed. dismissed. We hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find the show notes and a list of sources on our website, yournutritionprofs.com. Your homework is to follow us at Your Nutrition Profs on Instagram and to listen to our next episode. You can listen on Amazon Prime, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found. We'd appreciate it if you'd like us, write a review, subscribe, and invite your family and friends to join us too. If you have a nutrition or health question you'd like answered, let us know. We may do a show about it. Send an email to yournutritionprofs at gmail.com or click on the Contact Us page on our website. Thanks to Brian Pittman for creating our artwork. You can find him on Instagram at brianpittman77. See you next time. time.